glory to God. Hallelujah. It is uh, an exceptional pleasure to be able to come to you again today with uh, the word of the king. Where the word of the king is, there is power. So it's always exciting, I must say. It's always exciting. Hey, Alice. <laughs> Good to see you. You know, I'm kind of your neighbor. I'm not too far from your neighborhood. I'll not say too much at this point, but uh, I'll give you a shout. Everyone, uh, welcome, welcome. Let's uh, start our watch parties. Let's allot our friends so that we can have um, some time to just reflect and be blessed together. Shalom, Chad. Good to see you. Good to see you. I don't know where you are at today. If you can, um, you could indulge us as well and tell us where you are watching from. Uh, whether it is live or it is after the broadcast, please feel very free to just alert us uh, where you are at and um, we, we shall appreciate that. Uh, we shall indeed appreciate that. So, uh, for those who do not know me, I'm uh, Dr. Nobat Rakiro, and uh, it's just a honor to be able to come to you. I think this may not be one of those days where I'll, I'll uh, indulge much in uh, reflecting on myself, but really we, we want to be able to hear things that can help us focus, help us have clarity, and uh, be able to calm the storms that we go through whether it's present or that which is coming ahead. Uh, and what is present could be a remnant of stuff that you've gone through, uh, things that you've dealt with. Uh, good to see you, Dr. Edgar, Libea, Bernice, hey guy, all welcome, all welcome. So we, we live a very peculiar life. In this time and season, it is very easy to look okay in the out, on the outside and really be hurting, really be broken, really be scattered on the inside because we, we are living in a time where it's, it's dangerous to show weakness. It's risky to show weakness, even in areas where we had always known that there's a place we could have refuge, there's a place we can retreat and we can be able to open ourselves up and be be received without judgment, be received without harassment. Environments where we were used to having no competition now is rife with competition. There are, there are people living in families where the spouses are competing so bad that they actually rest when they leave the home and they don't look forward to coming back. And it's not supposed to be like that. And it goes on. I mean, this, this could be... Uh, uh, sibling rivalry that has gone out of order. It could be in business environments. It is notorious in the marketplace where it's a man-eat-man, -man, so to speak, environment. And then even in friendship circles. Uh, so much is the epidemic of phoniness, uh, phony friendships, superficial friendships and interactions. They have become so rife in our day that you, you do not really know who is around you as a true friend and who is around you operating as a spy. And because of that, we are shut up on the inside, we are locked in, and we can't get the peace and the healing that we need. Today, I pray that as we take time going through the constitution of the kingdom, then you will be able to get some light, some understanding, and some grace will be available to bless you and to raise you out of that situation that you may be dealing with. Shall we start with a quick word of prayer? Father, we thank you, we bless you for each and every one that is here today, uh, that is joining us. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will give them undistracted time during this broadcast, that they may be able to hear from you with clarity. And Father, let grace be available so that those who hear may be able to execute and implement the truth that comes their way. Father, I pray for protection for everyone 
that has tuned in today. And Father, that your grace may sustain them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So we'll take uh, a reference scripture. Uh, we are going to the constitution of the kingdom. And we are going to take it from um, Isaiah. That is section Isaiah, subsection 32. We will take uh, lines 13 through to 19. It's a bit of a long reading, but please uh, allow me. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, that's Isaiah chapter 32, verse 13 to 19, for those who may be wondering what I'm saying. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars, yeah, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens forever, a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, which has happened, ladies and gentlemen. The Spirit has been poured upon us. If you don't know about this, read the early parts of the book of Acts. So the scripture says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be as a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted as a forest, then judgment shall dwell in the land and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of the righteous, the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation, and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the description of the kind of places that we are supposed to dwell in. He says, and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. That's a calm place. No harassment, no worry, no fretting, no fear. A place that is appointed of God and it has, it has with it the hallmarks of being settled. The hallmarks of being established. The hallmarks of having escaped the rigors of still laboring to get into your own equivalent of a Canaan. All right? So he says, and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places. And it shall... When it shall hail, coming down on the forest, and the, she, the city shall be low in a low place. Good to see you, Olivier, Maurice, Benson, Sarah. It's a honor to have you. I really do appreciate it. Take it from me. I really do. Last time, as I was closing, I read this portion of scripture, and then I spoke very briefly at a high level about the linkage between the pouring of the Spirit and the transformation of the wilderness into a fruitful field and that fruitful field being considered a forest. So you see that the kind of fruitfulness that this field which initially was a wilderness experiences is so thriving that it's not just for subsistence. When the fruitful field is considered a forest, it means that it had in it the capacity for immediate sustenance as well as long-term covering. When you hear the fruitful field being counted for a forest, it means that it had in it the ability to provide long-term security, long-term productivity, long-term covering. And I talked about the subsequent result of the judgment dwelling in the wilderness and the righteousness being in the fruitful field. So this is not just religious jargon. You hear legal terminology, you hear um, operational terminology, you understand that it is descriptive of actual life situations. Therefore, I want to request you, please listen to me with an open mind and don't try to over-religiousize everything understand that there is a real God, there is a real spirit, and there is real change that can happen, and therefore peace is an actual reality that is accessible to you, all right? 
I talked about the work of righteousness being peace and the effect of quietness being assurance. And finally, I talked about the peaceable habitation. Now, today, I want to begin from there. Uh, good to see you, uh, Doc, uh, Doc Umido, and uh, uh, Cecilia, my good old uh, high school uh, friend, Mark. Always good to see you. So, I want to begin by laying down an understanding of kingdom dynamics, okay? So, when you read scripture, many times there is a use of certain words. You hear the word earth being used. There is use of the word world and kingdom. So, let's take a minute or two to make sure we understand this. Because many times we fail to understand that the English language is so limited. And when you translate from a broader language, a language with broader vocabulary that is more expressive, that differentiates, and you move that communication into a much more limited language, there are losses that happen. And some of these losses then impact our ability to understand what is being communicated. Mosambu, hi, good to see you. Raphael, welcome, Valentino, all the way, good to see you. And so I took time in part of preparation for this to expound on this. The word translated earth is very interesting. If you look at the Old Testament, the two main words that uh, the main word translated at is Eretz, E-R-E-T-S. It basically means field. It means ground. It means land. Genesis 1-1. You know, when you hear the, and the Lord created heaven and earth, it basically translates that he created the firmament and the land and the ground. So this is soil, terra firma. That's what we are talking about when you hear the words Eretz. How, there is also the word Terra. The word Terra actually talks of the physical planet. We are getting into Greek now. And this is the New Testament because it was originally written in Greek. So this talks of the physical planet. And then there's the word Gay. Uh, it's G-E, but it's pronounced Gay. G-H-A-Y, Gay. When you talk of this, it is now narrowing it down even further and it is speaking of the solid part of the earth. So it's not even the seas. It removes the waters and it talks of solid ground, earth. However, when the word world is used, what is usually translated into that, there are three main words. There's the word cosmos, there's the word eon, and there's the one, the word Oikumene, all right? Indulge me. You'll take time and come over this once again. And, you know, hey, you, you can be able to speak a little Greek when you're done. The word cosmos literally means an orderly arrangement. The system of authority. It means, therefore, when you hear the word cosmos, it means the system of authority in effect or that is in operation at any point or in any place. So Matthew 4, 8 says, the devil took him, talking of Jesus, to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Basically what the enemy was showing Jesus was, look, this is the systems of authority that I have laid out. And if you bow, I will give you ultimate authority over each of these. So you realize, if he's talking of the kingdoms of this world, then you realize that there is a multiplicity of systems that he had rule to or he had access to. Because the king didn't rebuke him for lying. The king declined to take his offer, rather. He told him, you shall only worship the Lord your God. He didn't challenge the fact that the devil had some reign, some authority over these kingdoms. If you look at Matthew 16, 26, it's, it asks, what shall it benefit a man if he gains the whole world? The world, world there is cosmos. What shall it benefit a man if he gains the whole cosmos? If he rises to the point where he has superiority 
or supremacy over a system of authority and then loses his life. What does he gain when he gets to the pyramidal apex of power, pyramidal apex of self-actualization? He gets to the point where he is the top dog. He is the big cheese. He is the, the, you name it. He's on top of everything. And then he loses his soul. That was the question the king was asking. And when I talk of the king, I mean the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew, Mark 16, 15. The commission says, go into the whole world and preach the gospel. The word there, if you check it, is actually cosmos. So he was saying, go into every system of authority. Go into every orderly arrangement and preach the gospel in that orderly environment. So while we have always assumed that it means the geographical planet, you can reach a geographical area and fail to minister to the systems of authority that have influence in that geographical terrain. So you can get into an environment and you are declaring verbally, but you are not yet preaching to the world that exists in that area. You are not yet addressing the authority systems that have held men and women. And these could be both just wicked or secular in the natural understanding and how we translate this. Good to see you, Elizabeth, Rose, you know, Samuel Beche, good to see you. So, the word cosmos is different from the word terror and gay. One is talking of the physical environment. Another one is talking of the system of authority. It is talking and relating to the order, the, how should I call it? The infrastructure that enforces order in that particular territory. All right? So this is very important for you to understand because of where we are going and how this ties in to you being able to walk in peace in your life, irrespective of what is going on around you, what is going on within you can be settled. The second word that is translated world is the word aeon. And this basically means an age or a period. You find this word used in Matthew 13, 22, uh, about the cares of this world. You remember that, that parable talking about the sower when he goes and he sows the word and he says, for some, when the cares of this world come. So it is talking of the cares of this period that we are living in because every period has peculiar cares to it. It has peculiar stressors on it. It has peculiar anxieties that vex and buffet the men and women that live in that period. And therefore, this parable is saying that some people receive the word and when the cares of that season of living, that period of life come, then they find that they, they don't have roots anymore and uh, they are blown out of the kingdom. All right? And you find this also used in Matthew 12, 32. The last one, Oikumene, is actually still talking of the terrene part of the globe. So there is cosmos and there's terror. Now, the final thing I wanted to speak about is the word kingdom. The word kingdom is primarily found in the New Testament and translated as basilia. It means rule. It means a realm. It's an area that is influenced by the rule of somebody, the rule of an individual, the rule of a power that has um, preeminence over that season. And therefore, if you look at Luke 16, 16, uh, it says the law and the prophets were until John. But since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. That means the rule of God is preached. It's not just theology is preached. No, it is the rule of God. It is the concept of being submitted to God and being influenced completely by God that was being preached. And every man presses into it. Oh, I love that. It means there's no exclusion. There's no exclusion. Everybody qualifies to press into this realm where God rules Jesus rules, the Spirit of God rules over their life, and then there is an outcome that comes out of it. 
So this, this is not just about religious activity. This is about being found in a place where there is a power that is having dominance over your life personally. All right? And uh, the application of this is very, very critical. All this is by way of strengthening the foundation of this series. I want to give you five important applications of what I've just shared with you. Number one, we need to understand that there are two worlds that are currently operating on the earth. Let me repeat this very carefully and slowly. There are two worlds that are currently operating on the earth. There are two systems of authority. There are two systems of government that are existing on this solid place called earth. This one that you can see from space. And this one that can be measured in terms of how quickly the speed with which it is rotating around the sun. This one that we are concerned about climate change. This physical blue ball that is hanging in space. On it, there are two kingdoms that are operating. Please understand what I'm saying. And as kingdoms, one of them has been characterized as the kingdom of light and the other one as the kingdom of darkness. Because these kingdoms are not physical in nature, they have the ability to supervene even in the same geographical location. They only cannot have coexistence in the life of a single individual. But in a house... You can have two people, one under the kingdom of darkness, one under the rule of the kingdom of light, but they are sleeping on the same bed. That is why when you find the teachings of the Lord talked about in Matthew, talking about the rapture, it says two shall be lying on a bed, one shall be taken and one shall be left. It is not a matter of geographical proximity. It is a matter of individual submission to a kingdom that rules over your life. All right? Then the second thing I want to speak to is that no one on, there is no place on earth that is free of a system of authority. There is no demilitarized zone. There is no neutral area. There is no place where it's vacant. And, you know, somebody say uh, some extraterrestrial being can come and just, they are neither for good or for bad. They are not. Uh, in the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light, there is no neutral territory on this big blue ball called earth. There is none. Every single square centimeter, every single area has under, is under the influence of either the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. The third thing is that because everyone who is born naturally is born into the kingdom of darkness. It requires translation. It requires translation for you to be able... It requires translation for you to be able to enter the kingdom of light. All right? It's very, very critical for you to understand this. The fourth thing is that Jesus, as the Prince of Peace, he reigns in a dominion that is characterized by peace. That is why in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, when describing his arrival, he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. It means over the area that he rules, over this kingdom of light, there is a characterization of peace, and therefore... It is critical for you to understand how that is linked with you being able to walk and experience the path of peace. All right? It's a very, very important thing. Please stay with me. And finally, you need to realize that there are various tools and strategies that the enemy would apply to eject you from the place of peace, from the peace of God, so that by so doing, you become fair game for the kingdom of darkness to have rule and sway over your life. As I close last time, let me not forget this. I mentioned the seeming contradiction that is in scripture. John chapter 14 verse 27 says, My peace I give unto you. 
This is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. He says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. My peace I give unto you. There is no confusion about that. It is clear that Jesus is promising peace. Yet the same Lord Jesus is quoted in Matthew chapter 10 verse 34. And also in Luke chapter 12 verse 51. What does he seem to be saying? Not seem, he actually says that think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am come not to send peace but a sword. Oh my goodness. What do we do with these two scriptures which seem contradictory? Even before I go into minister and teach a little bit deeper, why would the same Jesus in one place say, my peace I give unto you. In another place, he says, do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. Do not think that I have come to bring peace. No, I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. It means that he is saying clearly that his arrival is bringing contention. His arrival is going to disrupt certain guys who are getting on together and they will turn one on another. This does not look like the kind of Jesus that people would want to follow. I mean, if we are talking of a prince of peace and he says, I have not come to bring peace, what do we do with this scripture? I'm so glad that you asked and that you asked so early so that we can deal with this. Remember my earlier teaching a few minutes ago about the difference between cosmos and terra, or gay. That cosmos is the system of authority and terra is the firm ground. Jesus speaking, he says, my peace I give unto you. Look at the people he was talking to. These are his sons. These are his disciples in ministry. These are the ones who have submitted to his teaching. To those who submit into his teaching, by effect what happens is that they move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And when they get into the kingdom of light, him as the prince of peace, he has all legal authority to give them his peace. And to give them a peace that is different in nature from the rest of the world. That he says, my peace, that's why he says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. In the world you will have many troubles, but take heart, fear not, I have overcome the world. He is setting a completely different paradigm for those who move into the kingdom of God. So there is no contradiction within John chapter 14 verse 27. He says, my peace I give unto you and anyone who comes in, if you will find that there is peace available. He says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me because he trusts me. That's in Isaiah. So there is sufficient kingdom scripture to explain why and how we end up accessing peace when we come into the kingdom of God. What then do we do with Matthew 10, 34 and Luke 12, 51? When you then understand that every human being born naturally exists in the kingdom of darkness by default, the default setting of everyone who arrives is not because they have done anything. A baby who is born innocent as far as natural law is concerned because he has inherited the Adamic nature. He has inherited the sinful nature and therefore men do not, are not sinners because they did something wrong. They do something wrong because they are sinners. There is a nature of sin that is available and is part and parcel of every human being that arrives on the planet. And therefore, a baby that is born, it's only that because they have not yet reached the age of maturity to make a decision, if they die before getting to a place of consciousness, then they are allowed to be covered. They are given, uh, I don't know how to explain this in this short period, but there is a covering of that nature because they never go to make a decision. So God grants them grace. But the minute you get to a point where you can make a decision, you are a conscious human being, 
then your sin requires you to make a decision to move from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. How does this happen? It means that when you then accept the Lord Jesus, you break ranks with those that you were hanging out with before. That is where the sword comes. You find that you have been getting along with people, but the day you determine and declare that you are exiting the kingdom of darkness and you leave, then guys and ladies that you are hanging around with, you are getting along with very well, family that you are getting along with very well, suddenly they turn on you. It's because you are suddenly now under a different system of authority. And it's not personal. It's not just them who have beef with you. It's not them that suddenly dislike you personally. But you are now under competing realms. You are submitted to competing and contrasting authorities. And because of that, every time you move into the kingdom of light, there will be contention that arises before you were both in the same kingdom. There was no contradiction. There was no contention. That is what the scripture says. I have not come to bring peace. Because for everyone who receives me, they will experience conflict. They will experience uh, persecution. They will experience a level of rejection. They will experience some kind of distance. And this must never be taken personally. Listen to me, anyone who is here today. You may have been in the kingdom for 20 years. You may have come into the kingdom one year ago, one month ago, one week ago. And you may have taken it very personally. When people that you used to hang out with, your bosom buddies, your family, they turned against you, they cast you out, they rejected you, they maligned you. People who are supposed to be your covering, turned and slandered your name. They called you liars. They called you wicked. They... They, they heaped things on you that scandalized you, that assassinated your character. You must understand it is never personal. And if you're carrying bitterness that is making you unable to forgive, if you're still looking at it as that person, they knew me all my life, how could they turn on me at such a time? Listen to me. The Lord in John 14, 27, he said, my peace I give unto you. The peace that Jesus gives you on the inside, if you can access it, if you can allow it to flow like a river, it will enable you to walk in forgiveness to those who have turned against you, those who have misunderstood you, those who have thrown years of relationship down the drain simply because you said you were born again. They have dismissed you. Professional colleagues who handled you in high esteem, they walked with you. Business partners who were saying, man, this is the man to deal with. This is the woman. She is solid. She knows what she's doing. She is switched on. This is the partner we have needed. And then they discovered that you have given your life to Jesus and boom, the business deal went up. Boom, the environment that you had in the marketplace turns acidic. It turns vitriolic. It turns against you. Suddenly the group, the crew you are hanging with have turned against you. If you allow the enemy to bait you into a state of being deeply offended, even though it is painful, Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. It is, never, uh, it is never easy to be rejected by people you love. It is never easy to be misunderstood by those whose opinion you value, those whose uh, good, good perspective of you really matters to you. It is never easy when those people misunderstand you. It is never easy when those that you would run to for protection and covering are the ones who are bearing a sword against you. They are the ones who are cutting you to pieces. You must understand that this is not peculiar to you as an individual. The Bible says, do not think that anything peculiar has come upon you, but what you're experiencing, your brethren around the entire world have experienced that. Your brethren have gone through that. So square yourself today. I don't know where you are. If you're feeling downcast, you're feeling low, you're feeling defeated, you're feeling like there's no future because of the abandonment. 
because of the rejection, because of the opposition that you have faced. And sometimes you face opposition even in what you thought was already a Christian environment. You discover it was religious because in that environment you are not permitted to give your life to Jesus. You are not permitted to submit yourself to the authority of the word. You can do anything except start obeying the scripture. Start following the constitution of the kingdom. Listen, if something like that has happened to you, whether in the past, remotely, or in the fresh and recent past, the king is calling you today to forgive. Let go. Listen to me, my sister, my brother. You cannot go so far in the kingdom if you are tied with the chain of offense, if you are tied with the chain of bitterness, if you are tied with the chain of resentment. You are resenting those who turned against you. You are resenting those who let you down. This, you must understand that there are two kingdoms in this world, in this physical planet, excuse me, there are two worlds that are operating. One is ruled by the powers of darkness and one by the king of glory, even the prince of peace. This is the sword that Jesus talked about. That there will be rejection. There will be opposition. There will be persecution. Don't take it personally. You are, deal you are dealing with stuff, not because of you. Because were it about you as an individual, this persecution would have started years ago. It would have started ages ago. But why does it begin when you submit your life to the rulership of the king of glory? When you say that I have decided that I will no longer live for myself. I accept that sacrifice on the cross. That he who knew no sin became sin. So that I who was destined to perish can have life and life abundant. And while you are excited, while the joy of the Lord flows, while the peace of God is coming, people are getting offended. Men and women are raging against you. And you may have been wondering, why? Why? You may be speaking like David who once spoke and said, I am for peace. But when they speak, they are for war. Have you been there? I don't know who I'm talking to today, but have you been in an environment where almost everything you say seems to be wrong? It seems like you can do no right. If you try to, to be kind, they say you are pretending. If you hold, they say you are not even Christian. You are saying you love Jesus, but you, you are so arrogant. If you humble yourself, they say you are pretending you are an actor. We know you. It seems like you can't win. Don't get frustrated. God has called you to peace. Man or woman, citizen of the kingdom, listen to me today. It is good that there are men and women who you esteem. But you must recognize that the person sitting next to you in that workstation, in that open plan office, the man sitting across the desk as you're negotiating that business deal, the friend that you're sitting with, madame, in that boardroom, negotiating policy for your country, for that NGO, for that corporate, the individual that you grew up with and you are now grown with your own families, that individual may be in another kingdom other than yours. It is possible to be born naturally through the same womb, land on the same geographical area code, on the terra, on the terra farmer and yet end up submitting your lives to different cosmoses, to different systems of authority. And those two systems of authority can set you at loggerheads. And it can look like, since I came to the Lord, I have no peace. Since I gave my life to Jesus, I know no peace. I know no calmness. Everything is turning topsy-turvy. Things are being turned on their heads. Listen to me. You need to have understanding because you perish due to lack of knowledge. If you get offended because those who are under a different system of authority are fighting you, are rejecting you, and you think that by your good manners alone, you will be able to change their minds. You have signed up for a losing battle. Listen to me. If you are attempting to change the minds of people primarily by your good actions, 
you have taken on to yourself a task that does not guarantee any solid returns. God has called you to peace. Your Father in heaven has called you to peace. You must learn that you must walk by the principles that have been set before you. You are not permitted to depart from them. But the scripture also says that when the ways of a man please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies be at peace. It is God who makes your enemies be at peace with you. It is, and it is God, not your goodness. Carry yourself reflecting this God. Conduct yourself in a manner that definitely communicates the heart of the king. The heart of the king is not reduced to factional contention, to religious and denominational contention. When you walk under the rulership of the king, you cannot have a superiority complex just because when you were born, you landed in a terra firma through a womb that gave you a lighter pigmentation than others or a darker pigmentation than the others. What am I speaking to? I am saying that your arrival on this earth and the race that it gives you, the ethnos and language that it grants you, the tribal grouping that it grants you, the socioeconomic status that you are born into, in the natural, does not allow you when you come into the rulership of the king to walk with a superiority complex, to walk feeling better than the rest of your brethren. When you humble yourself before the Lord, he will exalt you, he will bless you, he will sustain you, and you will discover that no oppressor ever experiences peace. They experience calm, but never peace. Because by nature, the spirit of oppression is aggressive, it is cantankerous, it is contentious. And those are things that when they flow in the life of an individual, he or she can never have peace. He said, my peace I give unto you. The kingdom of God brings peace. It's not just the clever appreciation of kingdom doctrine that gives you peace. It is literally an impartation by the Prince of Peace himself. He says, my peace I give unto you. If he is spiritual, then the kind of peace he gives you must be spiritual in nature. Let me say that again, ladies and gentlemen. If Jesus is spiritual, if the kingdom of God is spiritual, then when he says, my peace I give unto you, then that peace must be spiritual in nature. It must have characteristics that are transcendent of the natural realm. They exceed the natural things. They exceed poverty. They exceed abundance. The peace of God transcends uh, and transcends acceptance by men or rejection by men. It transcends loneliness and being able to enjoy the company and good fellowship of human beings. It basically transcends every dichotomy that could exist in the natural plane. When you are under the rulership of the kingdom of God, it gives you peace. It gives you access to a peace that is special. Today, wherever you are, especially for those who are carrying wounds because they were rejected when they came to the king and you still have people that you haven't forgiven because they did you wrong, because they, they assassinated your character, because they came after you, because they made war with you when you wanted peace. Today, today the king is asking you, forgive. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're dealing with. The peace of God and the grace of God makes it possible for you right now to let go. Let go of those people who have offended you. Let go of those people who have misused you. Those who have abused you. Let go. Allow God to heal you and make you whole. So that your experience of the kingdom may be that which your father ordained for you. Don't allow yourself to experience life as though you're still in the kingdom of darkness. Don't allow the enemy to shortchange you. 
by telling you that so long as you are on terror, so long as you are on earth, there are things that you must deal with and there is only way of you there is only one way of you dealing with them. That is a lie. There is the kingdom way of dealing with it and there is the way of dealing with it according to the kingdom of darkness. You have the ability to make a choice and in the path of peace, you must make decisions that are aligned to the constitution of the kingdom because that is what guarantees the way you ought to go. So in the next couple of minutes, allow me to give you eight characteristics of this present world. When I say this present world, I am both talking in terms of the aeon, that is the period we are living in, and I am also talking of the power that is ruling most of the people that are living in this period. And therefore, I am talking of the kingdom of darkness. So when I talk of this present world, understand it both in terms of the cosmos that is ruled by the spirit of darkness and the eon that we are living in, the dispensation. You can call it the 21st century. You can call it the postmodern era. There are so many ways to characterize it. But the truth of the matter is that there is an eon we are dealing with and it's not the one that Peter lived in, in terms of a dispensation and a period. So, the characteristics of this present world, you need to know them because without understanding them, you will not have the ability to contextually deal with what comes your way. You will react emotionally, you will be frustrated. The same way I told you, when you move from the kingdom of darkness and people turned against you, most of us reacted emotionally with frustration because we didn't understand that we just moved from one kingdom to a kingdom that was designated as an enemy kingdom from where we used to be. Therefore, even those who are friends within the kingdom of darkness, they are, be, by reason of the authority they're under, they have to redesignate us as enemy combatants. Did you hear what I say? The minute you move, the sword that Jesus said, do not think I came to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. That sword is the separation of individuals from the kingdom of darkness into a new kingdom. And the kingdom of darkness does not take that lying down or happily. They get offended. The kingdom attacks, uh, attempts to attack and to retrieve that individual back. And that contention, many of us have taken it personally and gotten offended, because we don't understand the dynamics of the day we are living in, the dynamics of moving kingdoms while you are still on the same planet. Today I'm talking to people who have shifted kingdoms and some who are not sure whether they should shift kingdoms because they are afraid, having seen what happened to others. Listen, this is the winning side. Don't be scared. You need to make that decision. If you're, you have been in the valley of decision, today is as good a time for you to make the decision. But let me give you the seven, the eight characteristics of this present world and we will get out of your way. Number one, this present world is characterized by increased hostility. Increased hostility. There is a seeming rise in the willingness of everybody to be adversarial to others in the pursuit of personal goals. There is an increase in the willingness of people to offend, people to be aggressive, people to be hostile, if it will serve the goals that they have as an individual. Many times when you find yourself, say even in, a, in an interview environment within the natural place, you don't find people having comfortable competition competing as friends because after the interview you still have to live and work together the willingness for people to get hostile and attack one another and undercut one another is amazing there is a crescendo of this kind of willingness in the eon we are living in in the period we are living in, in this present world politically 
political discourse is no longer just about ideas. It's about destroying the other person, destroying their character, destroying their systems, destroying their credibility. There is an increased willingness for hostility in this present age. Business competition is no longer just about superiority of products. It includes business espionage. It includes red flag, uh, uh, false flag events where people destroy the market and the credibility of other competing areas. The marketplace is rife with hostility. That is a characteristic of this present world. Therefore, my brother, my sister, as you go out... The king told us, be gentle as doves, but wise as serpent. The wisdom of a serpent is that they have heightened contextual awareness. They seem to know what is going on. And it is in that rare occasion where they come across a human being that there is a confrontation. It is so rare that the natural animal called the snake will just look for a man, a woman, or a child to attack. Most confrontations are due to unexpected encounters from the side of the snake. You need to be aware of your context. You need to know that there is increased hostility. Don't go out naively. Don't go out with a simplistic expectation that because you are flowing in love, everyone loves you. Everyone loves you and what you're talking about. No, the truth is different. I wish it wasn't, but it is different. You need to know that as you come under the cosmos and rulership of God, there are people who will not play by the rules you are playing with. They will not be inspired by the things you are inspired with. Number two, another characteristic is increased division. There are more issues that are being championed that drive a wage between people today than has ever been in the history of humanity. You can find a group of five people, and if you lose upon them five activists, five men and women with their own agenda, when the feminist shows up, right there the group will be separated, men against women, pitting the women against the men. The men who were friends and compatriots and brothers five minutes ago suddenly become representatives of the patriarchy. They are branded left, right, and center. And the, the party spirit that the scripture talks about, the spirit of division and contention is what is driving this. Because a man or woman who is under that party spirit does not care that they offend the person who they are branding and labeling in a contentious manner and in a separating manner. The feeling of that person has nothing to do with their interests. They don't care about it because their goal is number one. Their agenda is number one. So you can find a young person coming and suddenly a group which was connected, suddenly it has division between the youth and the old and the old are oppressing the youth and suddenly a spirit of rebellion has been given room to arise men and women who are young who are learning under the fathers it says a natural philosopher once said that if i have seen father it is by standing on the shoulders of giants Another one said that what an old man can see sitting down, a young man cannot see standing up. There is need for collaboration and connection between the young and the old. But when a spirit of a, a division comes in and separates and brands and incentivizes that separation, how do you incentivize the separation? You make it financially lucrative to be a champion of one group against the other. You make it financially lucrative to say that you are championing a, a certain sexual orientation versus the normal. So that men and women who still are operating under the spirit of greed, who are still driven by natural lusts for personal gain, they will align because of the incentive often financial, sometimes favors. You will find that men and women are broken into multiple groups. Men and women who have lived together peaceably are stirred up by political players when their race is thrown 
And you know one of the major countries in the world that is in the grip of civil strife right now because race has been brought to the fore and the fans, the flames of race are being fanned on a daily basis. Maybe that's not your country. Maybe in your country it's religion. We don't like them because they are of this religion and their emotions that are running strong. The spirit of division has, presi has presided greatly over this present world. The list goes on and on. If you are in India, the caste system has delegated and labeled people in a way that there cannot be a certain connection. Emotional uh, romantic relationships cannot be accepted because they cross certain barriers created by men. I can go on and on and on. The number of fault lines that the enemy has presented and is attacking even the body of Christ with these same fault lines. So that men and women who are singing together, raising, worship, raising holy hands, worshipping the Lord. Today, tomorrow morning, you can find them hatefully arguing against each other. They have forgotten the love of Christ. They have forgotten the blood that has sanctified them. Because they are now under the grip of a party spirit that is enforcing division in this present age. I don't know who I'm talking to. But today, if you are wound up and stirred up by these divisions that exist in the natural, by natural labels, by decisions of behavior that men and women have made conscious choices, and therefore they have decided that based on that, there will be no relationship, there will be no cohesion. I call you today, the path of peace cannot be found under the subjection of the party spirit, of the spirit of contention, of the spirit of strife. This does not mean that you don't have different opinions, no. God knows that you have a free will. He created you with a free will. He expects you to be able to assess situations and make decisions. He expects that as you sit under his rulership, your decisions will increasingly be informed by the constitution of the kingdom to which you have submitted. And less and less to the natural characteristics that define your arrival on the terra firma, on the gay, on the physical planet. Let not the womb that you came through determine the decisions that you make for where you are going. Did you hear what I say? Let not the womb and the characteristics that it accorded you, whether it is sex, biological sex, whether it is race, whether it is um, uh, temperament, whether it is socioeconomic status, whether it is ethnicity, whether it is the religion into which you were born because your family held that religion. Listen to me today. The kingdom of God is bigger than the entry point with which you entered the world. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. There is a peace that these natural characteristics seem to confer. There are advantages of running with the group, running with the crowd, even if the crowd is running straight into destruction. There is a period of seeming peace. There is a, se a season of bliss that you have before destruction arrives and there is no remedy. You must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that the kingdom of God is superior to every natural characteristics that you have. And if you are quietly or even overtly taking advantage of natural separations, natural divisions, to better yourself, to advantage yourself, then I, let me tell you today that the spirit that you are, that is driving you cannot be the spirit that is under the Prince of Peace. It cannot be something that is characteristic of the kingdom of God. It can be characteristic of the environment you're in, including the one of religious observance that you're practicing. But the kingdom of God, he said, my peace I give unto you. The minute you have peace on the inside, even when you leave the kingdom of darkness, and the friends that you had before, while they may rage against you, you don't rage against them. 
You don't rage against them because someone can only give what is in them. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when they come against you, you realize this was the abundance of their heart. It was only quiet because it had not been provoked. But as you come into the kingdom of light and the king sheds abroad, abroad in your heart, his love, when he gives you peace, not as the world gives, then even when you're offended, that which is in you is what should come out. It's what should flow. It's what should overflow into expression. Not a spirit of division, but a spirit of mercy, a spirit of love, a spirit of peace. Kindness that characterizes the kingdom of God. There is no way the kingdom of darkness can counterfeit peace. The peace of God is so characteristic in its nature. That when you once you experience it, you can never fall for a counterfeit. You can never fall for, for what is fake, for what is make-believe. You get spoiled once you experience the goodness of the Lord. Number three. Thank you, Jonathan, Isaac, Nixon, uh, Robert. Uh, it's, it's such a pleasure to have you. And I hope you're learning. I hope you're getting blessed. Uh, number three. I realize, again, we may not be able to finish in the next 15 minutes. Let's see what we can cover. And, uh, and then we will leave the rest for the, the next season. I'm sure the Lord will bless us even as we do that. I'm sure the Lord will bless us even as we do that. So the, the third one is the replacing of internal governance by external governance. I am talking about the characteristics of this present world. This present world has insisted and progressively gone into the legislating of moral issues. It is legislating opinions. It is legislating conscience. It is legislating speech. Remember the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what you hear as speech is not something that is drawn from the physical. It is something that is coming from a very deep place. When you listen to the speech of a man, when you hear a woman speak, when you hear a young girl speak, what you are engaging with is an overflow of what is already in them. That is why scripture says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. How do you know? Listen to a child speak. They don't have discretion. They are sincere. They mean well. But what comes out is not always good. What they end up doing is not always good. There is an overflow out of the inherited human nature. The inherited fallen nature. When you talk to people, men and women, that is why it's very important to have deep and meaningful conversations with those that you bring close into your life. This one I am giving you free of charge. Men and women, you are going into relationships when you find people who are very defensive. That every time you say something, they mount a defense. They build a wall. And they don't let what is really in their heart come out. That is a red flag. Because you cannot walk with someone unless you are agreed. That's in the book of Amos 3.3. 3. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? And the true kind of agreement is when there is concurrence, when there is resonation between what comes out of your heart and what comes out of their heart. This can only happen when there is a depth of communion, a depth of engagement. When you open your life to them and they open their lives to you. This is particularly important in relationships that lead into marriage, that lead into family. Men and women who intentionally stay mysterious, who are loaded with secrets, who are hiding stuff. You can have what you think is a good relationship, but you know the day they discover stuff about you, what you really believe, things will fall apart. Therefore, you are living a lie. You are unstable. You are always worried what should happen, what will happen. Are you hearing me today? Now, the replacing of the internal governance. Remember the cosmoses that I talked about. 
the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Those are systems of internal governance. I, I have to repeat this. If you listen carefully to Genesis 1, 26, let us make man so that he may have dominion. You realize the purpose of God in creating man, in creating man, the only creation that was molded and then breathed into. When God breathed into him, there was a, an essence that was peculiar to the rest of the formed physical world. There is no animal into whom God breathes. There is no tree into whom God breathes. There is no star into which God breathes. There is no ocean into which God breathes. It's only man. How wonderful. And therefore, with the peculiarity of this, he singles out the purpose for creating this very unusual creature. And he says, let him have dominion. Adam loses that dominion. That's what happens in Genesis 3. He leaves. He forsakes that dominion. Hands it over. Instead of being a ruler, he becomes a servant. When Jesus is coming in Isaiah chapter 9, prophesied rather, in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, he says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And to us as a child is born, a son is given, and even before the names are laid out, it is described what he will be bringing. He will not be bringing theology. Theology had already come. He will not be bringing carnality. Carnality was already present. He was not bringing religious observance. He says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. This is not religious talk. This is dominion talk. This is governmental language. He was restoring what was lost in the Garden of Eden. That's how they got kicked out. They move from a God spot because they lost dominion. Therefore, the way into the God spot, the way back into it, is by allowing the dominion to come back into your life. Once you have understood that Jesus came with dominion, then it makes sense when you hear the word cosmos, the way of rule, a system of authority. And this system of authority is in your heart. Therefore, you find and suddenly it makes sense when he says the kingdom of God is in you. Do you understand now? Do you see it now? Is it coming clear now? Has the light bulb come on? This is what it means when he says the kingdom of God is in you. Because the system of rulership is internal. The system of rulership is internal. The system that ever carries the day is never the external one. That is why there is no government. There is no military. There is no corporate. There is no economic system that can change the hearts of men. It can beat them into submission. It can legislate them into a state of fear and inconvenience. But it can never convert the hearts of men. And in this particular day, because men have failed to understand that to come into the kingdom of God is to allow internal governance by the kingdom of God, by the system of rulership that was intended from the beginning. Because men have not allowed that to happen, then we legislate. If we don't legislate, then we create a system of trying to reach God. It's called religion. We have observances that we believe once we do this, then we are now closer to God. We have missed the mark. Listen to me. Anything you do externally is supposed to be an overflow of what is happening internally. Everything you do externally is an overflow of what is going on internally. If you see someone, be comfortable with murdering somebody. It is not because there was a convenient environment to commit murder on the outside. If you read the scripture, you will hear that out of the heart of man come all kinds of wicked things. Murder, adultery, fornication, hate, foolishness. It is describing that the things that we call evil, the things that we call criminal, the things that we can prescribe corporate punishment for, they are an overflow of the state of the heart of somebody and that person is under the rulership of a certain kind of kingdom. 
but the day we are living in because we have become increasingly unaware of internal governance. We are therefore attempting to replace it by external governance. And there are many people who mean well, they intend to try and remedy a situation, and therefore every time crime increases, they increase the punishment. They increase uh, the life sent the sentences that can be meted out in the courts of justice. They give the, the police forces the ability to use excess force in certain environments. They use extrajudicial killings. It is not possible to govern an internal situation with external legislation. Listen to me and listen to me well. You cannot achieve the kingdom peace by external enforcement and external governance. The kingdom of God is within you. And today allow me to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, so is the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness actually has its ability to function by having authority in the hearts of men and in the hearts of women. There is no other realm in which the kingdom of darkness can exist. Remember, the ones that have authority in the physical world are partakers of flesh and blood. That is why the son who was given had to come through the son, who, uh, a child who was born. The child who was born needed to be born to create the avenue and legal entry for the son who was given with authority, with government on his shoulder. The child who was born could have been killed by a natural king, but not the son who was given. The son who was given needed to wait for that physical child to grow before he could execute his ministry, before he could express the purposes of God in his life. We have to close in the next four or so minutes. So I've just covered the first three. I am helping us understand the characteristics of this present world. Because if we don't know it, then we will not understand how the kingdom of God differs from that and how we can conduct our lives in a way that is diametrically and totally opposed to the kingdom of darkness. The three that I have been able to cover today is increased hostility. This present world is characterized by increased hostility. The second thing is increased division. Increased division because of the party spirit. And this party spirit is incentivized. Men and women who would otherwise not turn against each other can do it at the drop of a penny when the incentive is right, when the price is right. Is there going to be a job if I take a position that is contrary to certain individuals? If I brand myself as a champion for this versus that? So men and women are taking up causes that they don't really believe in simply because there is sufficient economic and career progression incentives in place. Sometimes the incentive is social acceptance. Sometimes the incentive is being accepted within the mountain of influence that you, you function in, whether it's the sphere of government, the sphere of business, the, the area of media, the arts and entertainment. It could be academia. There could be thoughts that if you espouse, then you get rejected and ostracized within that area. So what do you do? Put down and hide under what you really believe and take up a cause that you don't believe and you don't agree in. This party spirit that entrenches and exacerbates division, it's characteristic of this present age. And finally, by way of reiterating, is that there is a replacing of internal governance by external governance. All right? Remembering that both the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness operate in the hearts of men. And therefore, out of the abundance of the heart flows the things that show you which kingdom someone is in. Now, if you find men who are in a kingdom that, are causing, that is causing them to do things that are criminal, that are hurtful, the long-term solution is to shift them from that kingdom. 
But what do we do? Because we don't know how to do what I said in the former, we do the latter, which is we legislate. We legislate to death. We legislate beyond common sense. We legislate until it makes completely no human sense. And still society doesn't change. Still life doesn't change. We need to close. I've been speaking on the path of peace and as I close this morning or this afternoon or this evening, whatever time zone you are in, whichever continent, and whatever media you're listening to me uh, through, I am really, really honored and grateful that you made the time uh, to invest in yourself, to listen to this broadcast, and that you're kind enough to allow me to come and speak to you. I would also want to say that if you are still carrying bitterness, if you're still angry, if you're still offended by those who turned against you, who misunderstood you, who went on the warpath against you when you came into the kingdom of light and you thought it was personal, remember from this day that it was not personal. It was never personal. Even if the people you knew were personal friends, even if they were siblings, even if they were relatives, there were parents, there were sons and daughters in the natural, there were professional colleagues, forgive them. The path of peace that you have been called to requires forgiveness. Let it go. Let it go, not because they have asked you to forgive them, but because the king has asked you to forgive them. So that your own father in heaven can get to forgive you. And you and I know, you mess up. We are all human beings. We drop the ball. We do that very often. Don't let the principles of the kingdom of light work against you because you're still offended by those who came after you and who are coming after you, even presently, because of the kingdom they're in. Secondly, please understand that you have the opportunity to walk in the path of life. You actually do. You cannot legislate that which can only come by walking internally into a new realm of authority. Wherever you are, if you're troubled, you have no peace, you are vexed, you're feeling suicidal, you're depressed, it doesn't matter what it is. The clouds of heaviness have gathered over your heart, over your mind. You feel like there is no way out. Allow me to come to you today and tell you there is a way out. There is a way. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't harm yourself. Don't harm those that love you. Don't harm those who are under you. Get the grace that you need. And let's pray together. And I'm sure the Lord will help you. Heavenly Father, I lift up those who are with me today. Those who have been so kind to listen today. Father, I pray as we started that we pray not only for the grace, the grace to understand but Father, the grace to be able to receive from you, that we may receive healing, we may receive deliverance, we may receive restoration. For where your word is, your power has always been present to heal and to restore. Part of the governmental authority you have given us is to execute the ministry of healing and health. Healing in the hearts of men and women who are bitter, who are rejected, who are suffering with loneliness. Right now, in the mighty name of the eternal King, the Prince of Peace, I rebuke every spirit of rejection, every spirit of suicide, every spirit of frustration. That confusion that has come out of that loneliness, I break its hold over you in the name of the King of Kings, even the authority that is from heaven. I declare that every inferior authority must bow and let you go right now in Jesus' name. It's not a negotiation. I command it to let go and I release freedom into your life, the peace of God where you had offense and vexation. May the peace of God descend upon you now and keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. From this moment onwards, for in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's always a honor to be able to speak the kingdom and deliver it into your, your personal space. Please help us to be able to get this word out.
to be able to continue this ministry go to our youtube channel kingdom charge subscribe like the videos and press the alert the little bell so that we'll alert you every time we bring new content and new material and new ministry your way also take the time to share it with your friends freely we have received freely we, we shall give so the ministry content please share it widely don't let men and women who are troubled in this day remain in the valley of despondence and despair that they're in share the love share the grace share the peace and for those who need us to minister to you personally feel free to come directly into my inbox drop your email or uh, the need that you have as well as the inbox of the kingdom charge ministry put in a message and we shall reach you without a doubt we'll get back to you and we shall stand with you and the lord shall be strong regarding your situation and finally if you want to participate with us and support and just bless this ministry feel free to uh, reach out on the number that will be put in the comment section or reach out to us and ask how you can be a blessing and we shall share that and you will be able to partner with us otherwise we love you so much we thank god for you and we are looking forward to seeing you in the next installation as we take characteristic five four to, to eight of this present world as we learn the path of peace god bless you this is reverend dr nobatrakiro i love you Peace of God. Bye-bye.